child is a child is a child is the pekin 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 is the kid 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 huge game huge game massive game and guys we're taking this into 2020 the whole point of football has a we're trying to advance so um i've ditched the suits for tactical snacks some may be angry about that but i couldn't give a flipping crap because last i checked i don't give a damn what anyone says i do whatever the hell i want to do massive game huge game okay but i saw that against inter milan and we are gonna have a three-way horse race for that top spot and the more that Barcelona play without Messi the more Inter Milan and Dortmund are going to be confident and maybe and do some things so um line up for Barcelona so I pretty much um copied what they did against Hetafe but there are still a few question marks now Messi will be on the bench both Messi and Dembele have returned back to training and they'll be on the bench. So this is just the starting lineup, but this is what this is what how Barca will start without Messi. Let's go to Boyo Stegen in, in goal. Um Lengle got himself sent off the weekend. Cheers, boy, he'll be back in defense. Where is Umtiti, by the way? Is Valverde saying that Longley is a better defender than Umtiti or is Umtiti injured? I mean, what's going on there? Like, I heard I, 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 I don't really know. Personally, personally. So um Junior Fierpo scored on the weekend. And you see, I the, the whole thing of Semedo and Roberto, I think is like this. If Barca wants to really attack, really go ultra-offensive, I think Roberto is a better um, option for an offensive Barcelona. A Barcelona that wants to maybe contain, keep hold of the ball and maybe playing away from home, then that's where I believe Semedo is Semedo is a better option there. So, of course, in that midfield, you got De Jong, your boy um, King Arthur and Digestive Biscuits. And in attack, so now just just, just word in attack, and obviously when we look at Inter, I'll um, expand more upon what I've done here. Now I think Ansu Fati might still be injured, but if he isn't injured and if he is available, then I would say Ansu Fati would play in his position right here. Um, so the thing with the Griezmann here is that I think people have been saying this, you know, I think on the live chats and so forth is that I think I don't think Griezmann is is, is very effective here. You know the, the, his his gameplay and how he game plays, very technical player. I don't think that he has the mobility or the forward thrust to really be able to be effective at this um, when he, he pushes out wide. So well, so the key thing of me bunching him up here, he has to play much more as a second striker and pretty much as the as the pointsman and the no, no, no number ten, providing for your boy Cannibal. Um, and I think that means that for Fiepo, Fiepo really has to do a lot of this left wing back walk and really cover this left flank and really be always there on the overlap for Griezmann to choose. So Griezmann now, if Griezmann has the ball here, Griezmann can give it to Fiepo, can give a short ball to Cannibal or can move forward with the ball or try and look for the overlap for either a Perez or a Roberto. So let's look right now at Inspela. Handanovic, your boy Handanovic, I've ran in him and I think I'll put him in tier, yeah, put him in tier two, tier two right now. Borderline upper tier two. So, um, De Vrij, Skriniar, Godin. That is the, the back three. Godin has been a flipping beast. Your boy Brozovic, Galadini, Sensi, Sensi Asamar, D'Ambrosio. And obviously for Sensi, he's the guy that really um, busts fraud from, from, from the midfield. Whereas these three pretty much uh, maintain their position somewhat. Obviously, they can move up a little bit. But I think the guy who's giving a lot more license to roam freely has to really be Sensi. Who can join up with both Martinez and Lukaku? And the key for this game is going to be Martinez and Lukaku and how they they ride. So just looking back at Inter Milan, I mean tactically, what do they need to do to approach for this game? Um, it's all about transition. What do they do in transition? Barcelona at the new camp, they attack. They play with a very high line and they will give you space. But Barcelona's mandate is that we will keep hold of the ball. When we lose the ball, we're going to win the ball early by pressing hard and by picky and longly reading the reading the the the, the play. But in the games I've seen again for Barcelona at the Camp Nou, looking at the Betis game, looking at the Villarreal game, is Villarreal Betis, they had opportunities, but they just, Valencia as well, they just made bad decisions when they had the ball. So, a crucial, crucial player, I think, for um, Inter Milan, I think it's, 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 it's going to be Sensi. You know, I think... If they have that ability to be in the transition, and you've got your boy Sensi saying what's up, um, I think how Sensi distributes the ball and how he links and brings in Matt Antinas or a D'Ambrosio and Asamo is going to be key. But for Asamo and D'Ambrosio as well, wide pitch, massive wide pitch, how they 
are able to now find space and are, and are able to maybe beat, beat the men and get the ball into space via a through ball, I think is what's going to expose Barcelona. But I think for Inter Milan and I think for most teams that play at the Camp Nou, is what are you going to do when you have that counter-attacking capability? Very rarely are you going to have those situations when you have men behind the ball. Remember what I said in my um, other preview. There are two phases you face as an offensive team. When you have the counter-attack and when you have men behind the ball. Against Barcelona and the new camp, you're not really going to be rolling with men behind the ball. Your opportunities are really always going to be on the counter. So it's just about how well can you go on the counter. But Barcelona, because they know their tactics so well with and without the ball, they are very excellent at retrieving the ball when they don't have possession. So it falls a lot upon the distribution of Sensi, Martinez, and of course, how Lukaku can be mobile, receive the ball, and try and bring in Martinez, Sensi, perhaps... Asamoa and so forth into into the game, but for the Vrij, Skriniar and, and and Golden, I think their defensive work is going to be key. But I think what also happens, and I think with Conte's teams is, it's pretty much a five, you know, where both Asamoa and Ambrose they come back, and I think these guys can obviously bunch in, and obviously make it a lot more difficult and problematic for your boy Cannibal and um, Griezmann to say what's up. So if we now go back to um, um, if we now go back here to um, the Barcelona, so right now for Barcelona, how do they pierce through um, a five-man defense, which is what they'll, they'll face when they have the ball and Inter are now defending? That is why I really believe that, um, obviously, people will say, okay, you know, go out wide, you know, and that's why I believe that, yeah, true, that is right, because Roberto and Fepa are going to be key in the game, and I think that is why you would opt for a Roberto, because I think Roberto is offensively better than Samedo. And it is worth the risk because Inter Milan's threats aren't out wide. Although Roberto is now is playing right mid, that means that he's going to be facing Asamoah. And even if it's not really the Asamoah that we've seen from the Juve days, that is, I think Asamoah is more dangerous offensively than a D'Ambrosio. D'Ambrosio is just very solid and consistent. But I still think that it's worth the risk because what is going to be very key for Barcelona is how they move the ball around. And I think for Barcelona, the, the key are their short passes. And the most important person is Griezmann. I think Griezmann has to be the brains of the team. If, remember, Messi ain't playing. You always have to work and build for the worst case scenario. With Messi not playing, Griezmann is, is, is going to be key, of course. For the way, I mean, for, see, with in De Jong and Arthur, I don't think any of this... I mean, put it this way. I do believe that Arthur and De Jong, they can come up and give Griezmann that, that support. But they're not known for their offensive thrust. I think those guys are just excellent central midfielders and excellent passers of the ball. But Griezmann is going to be very key because I believe that he has to play as, as a playmaker. And the positions that he picks up, and I think the kinds of passes that he can combine with a Cannibal, with a De Jong, and finding Fierpo and Roberto is going to be key. Because what does not do very well is they, is they get their wide man in these very good positions. And when they're guys are in this position, they don't cross mindlessly, as a lot of teams do, EPL. Whenever Fierpo and Roberto are in this position, they're looking for the cutback. So they're looking for... And what Cannibal does most of the time, Cannibal never really goes near post or far post. Cannibal, he he fakes to go like if he's going to near post, but then he always will, he will pulls back. So Roberto and Fierpo, most likely they're going to look for the cutback to a Cannibal or a Griezmann to try and initiate that crack cocaine. But, yeah, so for Barcelona, I think it's going to be about their movement of the ball. Um, but also as well, um, Busquets is going to be very important. I think um, he has to read the game superbly well. Because if he doesn't read the game very well, then that is where Inspan can get a lot of joy and beat them through. So for Inter... Inter can... <coughs> remember... I have to keep on reiterating this, and it's important that I keep on repeating myself. This is without Messi. With Messi, it's lights out. With Messi, Inter Milan cannot attack as much as they do. But without Messi, I think Inter can play a lot more risky. So, the effectiveness of Asamoa and Ambrosio is going to be very important. So it's going to be, be very important. And how well they find Lukaku will be key. But I think more so of than Lukaku playing as this frontman because it's going to be a thing of Inter Milan countering. It's going to be very important that Lukaku actually comes deep um, and actually um, shortens the space between himself, 
Martinez and Sensi because if they're now on on the counter and Lukaku is all the way up here, then it's too far. That means this is blocked off by Busquets. And remember, it's almost likening yourself to the Dortmund days with um, Klopp and Lewandowski. So whenever Klopp's teams were on on the counter, which is what he's now doing with uh, Firmino, his striker wasn't just isolated up here. He would always he would come up short and play with the ball to feet, hold hold the ball up. Turn, bring in, pass the ball through, Martinez through, sent it through. So it's quick passes, quick passes, and the striker is pretty much playing as a false nine. And Lukaku is very, can be very good on the ball, so he can he can very much think. So it's going to be fascinating in the sense of how much will Conte attack, how much does Conte want to go for the win, and what is his approach to the game? Is his approach containment? This is an approach Catanatio where you really give a lot of the, the, the ball to um, Barcelona and then you now see how you counter. But remember, one of the most brilliant tactical games that I've seen in a long time was what your boy Conte did to spin Euro 2016. That was Catanatio to the flipping max. That 2 0 crack. So, um, taking all into account, um, I'm still keeping with my um, scoreline that I said. And I am still going to roll with a. Um, 2-1 to Barcelona. I think it will be a close game. I think it's going to be extremely fascinating tactically speaking. But I'm going to ride it and say it's going to be um, a 2-1 to your boys um, Barcelona. Remember guys, hit that like button. Subscribe to thy channel. There will be more videos daily posted on the, on the channel as well. And think about also becoming a patron by clicking in the description box below. Follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram and head for the website as well, halfoffootballhot.com. All the links are in the description box below. Peace out, stay true. Let's ride. Support your boy HH and become a patron. Click in the description box below and gain extra content based on the tier of patronage you acquire. Click on the description box below to learn more. Thanks for your support. Peace out.